Genesis, we're going to be in chapter 4 today, Genesis chapter 4 this morning, Genesis chapter 4 today, it couldn't be more of an expository type lesson this morning, in Genesis chapter 4, beginning with verse 1, I'm going, we're going to look at the first five verses here in the Bible of Genesis chapter 4, and uh, verse number 1, the Bible says, and Adam, and, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering to the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And, he, and Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And uh, this morning I want us to look today, and I've entitled this lesson today, The Seed of Adam and Eve. <clears throat> the Seed of Adam and Eve. Of course, Adam and Eve being the first man and woman on the earth, uh, and uh, we've already discussed there how they uh, came to be, how that Adam was brought forth uh, from the, the dust of the ground and God formed him and then breathed into him the breath of life and he became a living soul and then how God put a steep sleep upon Adam performing the first surgery, taking the rib from Adam and forming uh, the woman and, uh, and then brought her and performing the first marriage unto the man and they were one flesh, husband and wife. But this morning we see that uh, they are uh, now uh, beginning to fulfill uh, one of the purposes that God had created them, and that is to bring forth um, life, to reproduce. And uh, we see that here in verse number 1. Uh, first thing I want to say this morning is that there's a knowing of each other. And this knowing of each other is having that intimate, and of course this adult Sunday school class, so I can talk a little freely here this morning, an intimate relationship with each other. By the way, contrary to the way Hollywood wants to portray that, that's a very special thing. Very sacred thing. Very holy thing. Not a filthy thing. And uh, and we see this here. Ad Adam knew Eve, his wife. And this knowing or this knowing of her was in that uh, in that relationship, the way God had created them to fit each other, to become uh intimate with each other and that's a very special and a very precious thing not uh, and it's so sad today that in our society and especially um, not just with um, uh, uh, young people but with young people but also with uh, adults as well we've almost made it a very filthy thing or something that's just so self-centered and, 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 and just uh, all about self and uh, rather than how precious this truly is um, to be able to have that relationship uh, with the opposite uh, gender. And, um, and so Adam knew Eve, his wife. This is in great fulfillment of, uh, of what God um, gave in Genesis chapter 1 and in verse number 28. Notice what the Bible says here. And God blessed them. That is, God blessed Adam and God blessed Eve. And God said unto them, Adam and Eve, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish or fill the earth. And so uh, we see that it was God's intent to, uh, to fill the whole earth, to populate the whole earth. Uh, and uh, in and, 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 and Hebrews chapter 13 and in verse number 4, um, the first part of the verse, it tells us marriage is honorable in all. And uh, it's a special thing what a uh, husband and wife share uh, together behind closed doors. And uh, it's a special sacred thing. And it's so sad how that Hollywood has portrayed it so filthy. And, uh, and has truly twisted what is uh, so special and honorable. But, um, but I want you to see also that there's the bringing forth of a son, of a child. Let's look at it here in, again in the first verse. It says, Adam knew Eve his wife and she conceived and bare Cain. And so we see that, that she conceived 
and she bare Cain. That is, the, the seed was now in her, and she carries Cain for nine months, uh, the normal time, uh, we would suppose, at least around nine months that she carried Cain, the normal time uh, mothers uh, would carry their child in the belly or in the womb, uh, and then she brought forth this child. Um, now, consider this. Consider how she would have bore this child. You know, um, think about what just happened in Genesis chapter 3. How that um, Eve partook of that forbidden fruit. And how that now um, God places um, a judgment down here upon the childbearing. Notice what it says here in Genesis 3 and in verse 16. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. You see that? And in thy conception, in sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children. Uh, oh, consider how Eve would have brought forth Cain. Think about this. I know that um, we have three children, and uh, and my wife has had, uh, you know, she's uh, had the, the shot, with, you know, for pain and, and uh, the comfort. And, I mean, think about how Eve bringing forth this first child. I mean, she probably would have thought, man, I'm dying. <laughs> I mean, because I mean, you, you mothers, you know the pain and, and, and what that would have entailed. I mean, there wasn't. It's not like Adam, you know, is a doctor. I mean, he wouldn't have known, you know, certain things to do and positions, and they didn't have Lamont's class, you know, breathe and all that. I mean, it was just I'm feeling pain. I'm, you know, what are you doing, Eve? I'm falling on the ground. Well, why? Because I don't know. <laughs> and uh, you know, pain's coming, and and uh, and she's uh, bringing forth this child. And so consider that this morning. Think a little bit about that, if you would, and how that she's probably uh, just uh, in shock, I would think, a little bit. Uh, I, I never had done this before, and now bringing this child. She had no mother to be by her side. She was the mother. She's the mother of all living. And so uh, she had didn't have the comfort of a mom there uh, as well. But she did have her husband, amen, thank God. She did have her man. Adam was there and uh, to be there with her. And, of course, God was overseeing and watching it all. But um, but this look at also the next thing, and that is how that she recognizes God. She acknowledged the acknowledgement of God here. Look back with me in verse number 1 again. And uh, Adam knew Eve, his wife, she conceived and bare Cain and said, notice this, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Here we see that Eve, yes, she now has that that judgment upon her that she's going to bear in sorrow, uh, the shock and the pain and all of that. But through it all, she acknowledges God. She's, she's acknowledging her God. I have gotten a man from the Lord. Um, here we see that Eve is gener her generating power, that is the way God had, had created uh and made the, the, the body of a woman to be able to carry life, a, you know, a baby in her womb, and to bring forth life. You know, how that, uh, you know, the hips, they open up and all those things. But, you know, how God made the woman's body to be able to bring forth a child. So she's acknowledging, I have the generating power that God has given me. And she acknowledges that it came from God. And she also acknowledges God's divine power, for without Him there could be no life. She's acknowledging that this is of God. She says, I have gotten a man from the Lord. You see that? The Lord. So she's acknowledging that it takes God's touch to truly bring forth life and have this child. How special that is. And I know we have a couple mothers in our class this morning. And, uh, you know, how special that is. It's a, the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, truly. I know, but life. When that child comes forth and you see that baby... I mean, it's it's hard not to cry, really. Just it, it's just that's special, that's beautiful, and you know that's beyond a man and a woman. That's the touch of God. That's the beauty and the power of our God to bring forth that life. And uh, so she's acknowledging here in John chapter ten, in verse ten, Jesus said, "I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly." He's the giver of life. Not only the physical, but also God is the giver of eternal life. Amen? Mm -hmm. That through Him we can have eternal life and only through the Lord Jesus Christ. But then I also want you to see with me this morning 
the extension of the family. The family now is going to begin to grow, the extending family. We see it here. Uh, we have Adam, we have Eve, and uh, and then look with me in verse uh, number two, we see that Cain is coming, but we're also going to see another child. It says right here, we're going to start with verse two, and she bare, excuse me, and she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. So she has Cain, and now she has Abel, Cain's brother. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 127, and uh, there in, uh, in verse number 3, I'm going to turn there in Psalm 127, in verse number 3. It says, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is His reward. It's, she's already acknowledged that God, this is of you. It's His reward, but it's an heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb. And how special and precious that fruit is. And uh, we see that now, even though Cain and Eve, even though, excuse me, Adam and Eve had disobeyed the Lord, and yet God, there was judgment for that, and yet God still allowed them to be able to fulfill what purpose He had them here for. To, to, and that was to to uh, you know multiply and to fill the whole earth, and he's allowing them to have children, to bear children, to bring life, <clears throat> excuse me, into the world. And and then we see the occupation of their heritage. Uh, look what it says here, and with me, if you would here. Let's notice again in verse number two that Abel was a what? A keeper of the sheep. But Cain was a what? Tiller of the ground. Here we see that Cain was a tiller. He was a farmer. Uh, he was a cultivator. He worked the ground. And we see that Abel was a keeper of sheep. He was a herdsman. He was a sheep herder. And uh, here we see that they had respectable occupation. Uh, these were hard working, intelligent sons. So much for the Neanderthal thought, amen? amen. And and, uh, and so we see here that God created them with intelligence. Uh, Adam and Eve were very intelligent. They didn't need any help books, amen? They did pretty well, I'd say. <clears throat> and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and also they had children, and these... And these fellows were hard-working young men that uh, that uh, they were out there farming and and working uh, and, and and grounding the sheep. And so the, we see uh, this here, this uh, this intelligence here of life here in the beginning and early stages of 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 creation here. And then we see an offering to God. Now, just I'm going to take a little more time on this part, but let's look at the offering. To God this morning. Found in, in verse number 3. It says in chapter 4. And in the process of time. It came to pass. That Cain brought of the fruit of the ground. An offering unto the Lord. And Abel. He also brought of the firstlings of his flock. And of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel. And to his offering. But unto Cain. And to his offering. He had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. There's two things today I'd like for us to look at this morning about the offering. First of all, I want you to look with me and consider the blood offering, the sacrifice. Uh, here in Genesis 4, 4, Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock, that is of the sheep that he was the herdman of, that he, that he corralled, that he took care of, and the fat thereof. Obviously, uh, he had learned this from someone. From somewhere he had been taught this. In Genesis chapter 3, after Adam and Eve had fell in the Garden of Eden, they, they in their own intellect, they took fig leaves and tried to make themselves clothing to cover because they knew that they were naked, their eyes were opened. And um, that God uh, gave them and showed them uh, a more a better way. Uh, the proper way and he gave a sacrifice unto himself and then he clothed Adam and Eve we see that there in Genesis chapter 3 verse 21 unto Adam and also unto his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them well obviously for God to do that there had to have been a sacrifice 
There had to have been the killing of an animal. Blood had to have been shed. In the book of Leviticus chapter 17, in Leviticus chapter 17 and in verse number 11, the Bible says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Now today, you and I, we understand that. Um, I have read, and, I'm, and I think this is accurate, um, that uh, George Washington fell into be very sick. And, um, and of course, back then, uh, they used to bleed people. As a matter of fact, that's where if you've ever been to the old barber shops, um, you'll notice out the pole that was red and white. It's because barbers used to bleed people. And uh, they cut them a little bit. And they believed that if you were sick, uh, of course, this would be years ago, generations ago, but if you were sick, uh, they believed that if you bled them a little bit, they'd get the poison out of the blood and that you'd be all right. And I had read that they actually bled Washington to death and uh, by, because he was so sick. But the Bible tells us and teaches us for the life of the flesh is in the blood. I mean, folks, if we bleed ourselves, we're going to die, man. I mean, we need blood to live. We know that. God knew that. And, uh, and so, but he put it right there in the book for us. He says, And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. So I believe with all my heart that God taught that to Adam. And showed that to Adam and Eve there in Genesis chapter number 3. That he gave that. How, will, how would they know to even give a sacrifice unto the Lord? Had Adam not been the head of the home. Not have explained it and taught that to them in, in some manner. And, uh, and, so, uh, and so Abel uh, receiving that teaching. He, he also uh, kills uh, one of his sheep. And, uh, and takes the fat thereof and offers it unto the Lord. A blood sacrifice in Hebrews chapter number 9 in the book of Hebrews chapter number 9 and in verse number 22 the Bible says this and almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without the shedding of blood is no remission there must be uh, the shedding of blood. Of course, that's why Jesus came to be our lamb. Jesus shed his blood for you and I on the cross of Calvary to cover our sins. And when we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, we are covered by his blood, by his righteousness, by his righteous account. And uh, therefore, when the Father looks upon us, he sees us as one of his sheep, those of us that know him as our personal Savior. What a great truth, what a blessing that is. And so we see that the first thing about the offering is that it was a blood offering. Abel's offering was a blood offering. But also I want you to see something that's often not brought out in this part. And that is that it was not only a blood offering, but it was a first fruit offering. And I think that's important. Let's look at it in verse number 4. In Genesis 4. And Abel, he also brought of the, what's the next word? Firstlings. firstlings. You see that? The firstlings of his flock. A couple of things here. It was the firstlings. So it was the first fruit, but also not only was it the first fruit, but it was of his. It's personal. You know, um, no one can receive Christ for you. You have to do it for yourself. Amen. Yes, sir. It's a personal acceptance and receiving of Jesus Christ. Um, I, I, can, I want my children to truly be saved. I believe they are. They've all made professions of faith. And, and, and they have testimony of that. But even if, let's say, you know, it, sometimes it's, it, we can kind of portray to be something that we're not. We can kind of learn the ropes without really knowing the truth. And, uh, you know... Even if that's the case, I can't save them. No. I can't save them. There's only one that can save them, and that's the that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so uh, I prayed this morning. I prayed for the Holy Spirit to draw the hearts of men and that people that don't know uh, the Lord, that today they fall under the convicting presence of the Holy Spirit and that this would be their day to trust Christ as their Savior. That's my prayer today. And... Um, so what we see here that that uh, the 
So it's a personal thing. It was of his flock. It had to be of Abel. He couldn't do it from, from Adam's. He couldn't take Adam's. He had to take himself. His his offering. And then I want you to see here that it was the first fruit. Um, in, in Numbers chapter 18, we're going to look at a couple places here on this. Um, but in Numbers chapter 18, just about the first fruit part of it. Um, in Numbers chapter 18 and in verse number 12. The Bible says, All the best of the oil, and all the best of the wine, and of the wheat, the first fruits of them, which they shall offer unto the Lord, them have I given thee. So, here again, to give the first fruit, to give off the top, is to acknowledge where it all came from to begin with. The Lord, right? That it came from God. Without Him, we would not have Nothing. We'd have nothing. Uh, it's, you know, I am what I am by the grace of God. I have what I have by the grace of God. And to give of the first fruit is to give off the top, to acknowledge that, Lord, all this that I get to enjoy. Hey, to give that 10% is to acknowledge that without you, I wouldn't even have the 90% to live on. It's the first fruit. And so Abel gave of the first fruit. Proverbs chapter 3 and in verse number 9 of Proverbs 3, 9, it says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. And that's what you and I should do today. And, uh, and to honor the Lord. Uh, honor the Lord with the first fruits that he has given us. And, uh, you know, truly think about this this morning. I know it's Mother's Day and we are... Um, our thoughts are on our mothers, and, and we're going to talk about mothers in the morning service today and honor our moms today. And uh, But truly, you know, and I believe we should honor them, and I hope today that you'll take some time and do something. Uh, maybe if, if, if all you can do is call your mom. Uh, you say, well, my mom's in heaven. Well, then pray and thank God that you had a mom. Amen? And uh, Because without her, we wouldn't be here. And, uh, and so thank God for your mother. And, um, but you know, also... Take some time today and, uh, and and think about you know think about the first fruits. Think about the sacrifice that Mom has made for you to be able to be here where you are today. Yeah. Yeah. You know I know that there were times that my mom did without so that I could have a little song. I didn't always have you know some of the things that other people have, but I had something because Mom, uh, you know, did a little without, and uh, and so you know just. Just think about that. But anyway, uh, honoring the Lord. And then as we think about that, mothers, think about the Lord and how we want to honor Him with our first fruits because without the Lord, where would we be? We wouldn't be here today. <laughs> we wouldn't be here. Right. So thank God uh, for, for thanking with your first fruits. Uh, I'm going to kind of close with this. Not going to be able uh, it was no extra time this morning. Uh, but um, we should offer regularly to God the first fruits of our time. Think about this. God has given you all week. Have you given Him some time? If not, listen, you, you can't do anything about that. That week's gone. But start today. Start today giving God some first fruit. Your time, your talent. You know, every one of us has something to offer. Every one of us is specially created in the image of Amen. Almighty God. Yes. And we have a purpose. Have you considered the talent that God has given you? I don't know what that talent is. I don't know. You say, preacher, I don't even know that I know what that talent is. But this is what I do know. If you ask God, He'll reveal it to you. Say, Lord, show me what purpose you would have for me to fulfill in your plan. God has a purpose for you. God has a purpose for your life. He's given you a talent in which to serve. Oftentimes, and it's so sad, we'll see people that God has give, gifted them with great talent. Talents that maybe they've even um, um, refined in church. And then we'll take that talent and give it to the world. How sad. How sad. Honor Him regularly with the first fruit of your time, with your talent. And then thirdly and lastly this morning, your treasures. Your treasure. God has given, listen, to whom much is given, much is required. 
And I'll just tell you this morning, we're in a blessed country. We're in a blessed country. I thank God for the, the, the freedom of our country. I thank God for the American flag and what it represents. I'm thankful that I am an American. That's a great treasure. And, uh, and, and so let's honor God today. As we think about our mothers, let's think about what first fruits we can worship and offer unto Him as we thank Him for a mother who loved us enough to get at times, well, can I just say, as Eve did, go through the sorrow and the pains of birth. She was willing to lay down and feel the pain so that you could come forth. Father, I thank you today for the Sunday school class. I thank you for these that came. Lord Jesus, I, <clears throat> I pray and trust that you are glorified in our lesson this morning. And I pray today that as a church that we will decide and also individually in our hearts decide today that we're going to honor you with our first fruits of our time and our talents and our treasure. And, Lord, today on this Mother's Day, that we will take some time and give a phone call or if we're able to drive over and see our mothers. If we're not able to do that, if Mom's already in heaven, that we'll take some time and just pray and thank you for our mother. And remember the sacrifice and the times that she gave of herself for us. We'll give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming to Sunday School class this morning. God bless you.